So in terms of how we think about doing surgery on things like this, we first determine eloquence. Um, and we're going to talk, I'm going to talk a little bit more about what it means to be eloquent. Um, eloquence in generally just means, does something have a function that can't be replaced by something else in the brain? So does it have a critical function uh, that we rely on for our daily activities? And we'll talk about the different areas that, that are considered eloquent. We assess at-risk structure. So what is it near? So is it near cranial nerves? Is it near the optic nerve? Is it near major blood vessels that we need to worry about in terms of how we're gonna approach it and how we're gonna remove it? Uh, for cortical lesions, we generally try to choose an approach optimizing both the shortest and the safest trajectory. So in general, we like to say, choose the shortest path because you want to go through the least amount of brain to get to anything. So if a tumor, for example, comes to the surface, you wanna start your opening right at that surface. So you're minimizing the manipulation of the brain. In some cases for deeper tumors, it may seem like a path that's short is the best, but if that path is going through an eloquent area, then it might make sense to do a much longer path going through a non-eloquent area uh, in order to preserve function. So we often utilize natural channels, for example, the sylvian fissure, if we need to access a tumor that is at the back of the sylvian fissure or in the insula, and we, we use these natural bases that the brain provides in order to minimize injury to the brain itself. Um, for skull base lesions, so those extra axial lesions we were talking about, like meningiomas, uh, the approach is generally anatomic. So it's guided, it's, it's pure anatomy. We go by skull based anatomy and we approach it based on the bony anatomy that is needed in order to expose the tumor. And the goal here is really to minimize brain manipulation because we're talking about tumors that are really not arising in the brain, they're arising outside the brain. And so the goal is expose as much as possible and really work uh, in that extra axial space. You have to know what the safe zones are that can be used to access lesions. And so, you know, in, in anatomy labs, we really developed very um, nuanced approaches to lesions. Almost anywhere in the skull base can be accessed using natural corridors and, and taking advantage of that. So using advanced imaging is really important. So when we're not sure what the anatomy is or where the eloquence is, we can use advanced imaging in order to get a better picture of both the functional tracts and also where in any given individual where we think the functional cortex is. Uh, when we are removing lesions from eloquent areas, we can really take advantage of advanced neuromonitoring. So we're able to monitor patients both for their language, we're able to monitor all of their movements. We're able to monitor their um, sensory function. And that really helps us to keep patients safe during surgery while removing tumors and other kinds of lesions from areas that otherwise are either close to or within eloquent areas. In all, almost all cases, what our goal is always to what we call a maximal safe resection, which means we try to remove as much as possible without doing harm. So, you know, very rarely and almost never really are we able, are we accepting of a significant neurologic deficit in order to remove something? Um, you know, unless something is life-threatening, we generally want to remove as much as we can while preserving all of the function uh, that the patient comes in with. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you liked that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.